So Nina Turner was on CNN recently, and this entire clip that I'm about to play for you is both maddening and also really great to watch at the same time because everything that Nina Turner says is exactly what the mainstream media should be hearing. But she has this exchange with a former Manchin advisor. In fact, this is the senior advisor to Joe Manchin. His name is Jonathan Cott. And this guy, I think he represents peak DC brain rot, and you're going to see why in a second here. But take a look, and then I have so much to say about this when we come back. Nina, to you first, just your reaction to, look, what really appears to be voting rights legislation dead. I mean, this is a sad day. We're in the 21st century, Brianna. We're not in the 20th century, the 19th century, the 18th century. And this is really a sad day, a sad time for democracy. And although the African-American community certainly shoulders an, an, an enormous burden when it comes to voting rights because of the historic import of how we had to fight and people had to die to get those rights, this is an attack, make no mistake, on every single person in this country, particularly the poor, the working poor, and the barely middle class. An absolute sad day that you have senators that would, would r rather hold on to the filibuster than to hold strong for democracy in the United States of America. Sad indeed. Jonathan, what do you say? Hey, yes, we need to pass Voting Rights Act. Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema's positions on the filibuster hasn't changed. They don't think it's good for the Senate and the country overall. And they're worried about what might happen when Republicans take back control of the Senate, which, by the way, isn't that far off. This was it was only two years ago they had complete control. So they are looking to preserve how the Senate works and how and force them to work in a bipartisan way. But Senator Manchin completely agrees that we need to reform our voting rights in this country, and he's working on it, and he's working on a bill, and he's hoping that he can get nine more Republicans. But these things aren't easy, and they take time. Nina, what do you make Brianna, of that, that sort of preservation? The, yes. Preservation, my behind, Brianna. Look, we need to preserve democracy now. So I got to disagree with, with my colleague here. They better not utter the not one quote from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Not one, or any of his colleagues and contemporaries as we come up on his birthday on Saturday and the national celebration on Monday. This is, these people are cowards. They are soulless cowards to hold up a daggone rule. Filibuster is a rule. It's not written in the constitution. It's not a right, it is a rule. And they're standing in the way of it. So this is nonsense. They worried about what the Republicans going to do. Let's take care of 2022. Let's do what Democrats can do right now. They have the power. And my message to President Biden, now he done wasted a whole bunch of time with these folks being diplomatic, inviting them out to, to the White House and to Del time out for it. He needs to hold a press conference. Let them know either you're going to be by my side saying you're going to be with me and getting rid of the filibuster or I'm gassing up the jet on your behind, and I will be in Arizona and West Virginia di directly and let the American people know who's standing in the way of my entire agenda, not just voting rights. So President, Bom uh, President Biden, gas up the jet and cancel student debt. Those two things. Jonathan? That's, that's not how Congress works. Uh, the pre President Biden is a long, has a long history of working with senators. He knows the best way to do it is work with them, have constructive conversations. That's why he had the two of them over to the White House last night. They're going to keep working together. He's had a great first year. He's had a historic first year. And Democrats should be celebrating that and running on that in 2022. Gassing up the jet and heading to West Virginia and Arizona is not actually going to get it done. There are ways that people can get things done in D.C. Senator Manchin and Senate Cinema proved that with a historic infrastructure bill that they just passed. That's how you get things done. Slogans and, you know, just yelling isn't the way it works. Shut the fuck up, you nerd. Holy shit. People like that is why I can't stand America. Like, this is the worst country on the fucking planet. I just, I, wow. Just wow. I mean, the, the hubris, just how smug he is as he shoots down what Nina Turner is saying. It's just so, so frustrating, but he's just a microcosm of a broader issue because every single consultant, every single advisor, or almost every single consultant and advisor in D.C., they think in that same exact way. I, I just, I, I can't stand it. It makes me rage watching that. But every single thing that Nina Turner said is on point. All she's saying is, 
fight, Biden. Just fight. Gas up the jets. Go to West Virginia. Go to Arizona. Hell, we don't know. When leftists like myself float these types of strategies, I never know if it's going to work. All I'm saying is show us some sign that there's life. There's intelligent activity somewhere in the government. And at a minimum, there's a desire to fight at least minimally. But th there's nothing. There's nothing. Joe Manchin and Joe and Kirsten Sinema are just controlling Joe Biden's agenda. And Joe Biden is just taking it. And he's saying, uh, I don't know if we can get this done. I'm going to try. I'm going to fight for it. Yep. Great fighter. Best fighter ever. Joe Biden, who uh, fought very hard for the $15 an hour minimum wage and build back better. And uh, is fighting very, very effectively currently against COVID as we are in the worst phase yet. I just, I'm so frustrated. So what Nina Turner is saying is something that never gets said on mainstream media. They never put the onus on Joe Biden. I absolutely understand ripping apart Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. Surprisingly, the liberal media, at least, CNN and MSNBC, they've been pretty hard on Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, at least relatively speaking. But Let's be real here. If it weren't Joe Manchin, if it weren't Kirsten Sinema, it'd be John Tester. It'd be some other corporate Democrat. So at some point, the burden has to be shifted to Joe Biden. And that's what Nina Turner is doing. And that is what desperately needs to happen. Joe Biden is the president of the United States. Do you know how much power he has as president? You're not a god emperor, right? But you have your bully pulpit. You can set the agenda. You can exert pressure on people that nobody else in this country can. But yet he's not doing that. And because he's choosing to not do that, leftists like Nina Turner, like myself, like others are saying, you have to at least try and fight. But he's not. If he were to fight and still fail, then, you know, okay, you still take responsibility for that, but that's disappointing. But at least we could say you fought. He's not even trying. So that's the issue. But here's where the mansion advisor comes in. He says that, uh, you know, in response to uh, Nina's suggestion to Biden to gas up the jets, he says, oh, well, it just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work. It's not working right now, dummy. It's not working currently. Congress has been essentially incapable of doing anything for fucking decades now. So it's not working currently. The status quo isn't working. You understand that, right? We're on the brink of collapse as a country, as a fucking species, as climate change ravages the planet thanks to uh, the senator who you were an advisor to. So do you not understand that it's not working now, you fucking moron? So... These suggestions are important because if we don't get off of this current mindset in D.C. that things are the way that they used to be, oh, you just, you know, you, if somebody doesn't agree with you, you invite them over to dinner and, you know, you, you hang out and then you, you work through the differences. That's not the way it works now in our late stage capitalist society where Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema are essentially proxies for their corporate donors. Do you understand? They're puppets and the puppeteers are controlling them. So it's not as easy as it used to be. These are not good faith negotiations. These are bad faith actors who are controlled exclusively by their corporate donors. And you don't get that. And nobody in D.C. gets that. That's why our country is so fucked. That's why fascism is on the rise. It's because of weak liberals like you, weak dipshits like you, who can't pull their own heads out of their fucking asses for two seconds to think maybe what we're doing isn't working. So let me say, let me let me go through what he says here. He says that's not how Congress works, and she she says this directly after Nina Turner says gas up the jets, cancel student debt. Well, Biden can cancel student debt. What? Why? Why is that not an option? Um. So President Biden has a long history of working with senators. I should do the thumb point as I as I uh, quote this dipshit. He knows the best way to work with them to have constructive conversations. That's why he had the two of them over for the White House last night. They're still not budging, you dumb motherfucker. He had them over for dinner. He could literally spread Manchin's cheeks and eat out his asshole, and Manchin isn't going to budge. And that's what you don't understand. That's what the, it's, it's driving me mad because these fucking morons don't get it talking to them, having conversations, holding their hands isn't going to fucking work. It has not worked. That strategy has been an unmitigated failure. And that's what we're saying. And you, you don't see it. But then he points to the uh, infrastructure bill. Uh, he says that uh, Biden has had a great first year. He's had a historic first year, and Democrats should be celebrating that and running on that in 2022. Gassing up the jet and heading to West Virginia and Arizona is not actually going to get things done. Maybe it won't, but what you're doing now is not going to get things done, too. 
Um, and to say that Democrats had a great first year because they passed infrastructure, who gives a flying fuck about infrastructure? The only reason why that was accomplished is because it is a complete giveaway to the corporate donors of both Democrats and Republicans. It is a corporate toll road bill. Ask any American how that's impacted their wallets. Ask any American whether or not they are able to pay their rent more easily because of the fucking infrastructure bill. What really mattered was the human infrastructure bill, and Biden couldn't get that accomplished. So no, infrastructure has not been accomplished. It's incomplete because you morons broke up the bill, and you did that to appease the corporate donors of Mansion Cinema and the select few of Republicans. And let's just be really clear here. If something actually does happen and it's a bipartisan thing in this day and age, that isn't just inherently good because usually when these corporate ghouls in both parties actually come together and do anything, they're fucking over the American people. They're passing an expansion of our already bloated military. So I don't want to see Democrats and Republicans come together. I don't want to see that. I want to see Republicans completely uh, marginalized out of government. I want them sitting on the sidelines. I want them nowhere near Washington, D.C. because they are incapable of governing because they are psychopaths and the Democrats aren't much better, but that's why they should be a Republican party. They should be the new de facto conservative party and we should have just a party that represents the working class. But none of this is happening because we we live in a late-stage capitalist society and what we're witnessing is capitalism literally eating away at what's left of our democratic institutions. And as the this, uh, this ship is sinking, all of these dipshits are saying, no, 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 we change nothing. We just keep doing the same thing we've been doing since the, uh, the Clinton years. Remember uh, triangulation? We're just going to keep doing that. Same ship, new day. Like the planet could literally be on fire currently everywhere. An asteroid could smash into the planet and half of the human population could be on fire and they'd still be floating the same strategy. These are people who just genuinely, they have no uh, knowledge about what the American people want and they also don't give a shit, right? Because if they at least were clueless but cared, they'd be searching for answers, but they, they don't. They, they just are incapable of shifting that mindset. This is, again, it's DC brain rot, peak DC brain rot. So he says, slogans and yelling isn't the way it works. This is him condescendingly telling Nina Turner that what she's saying is just the slogan. Okay, well then uh, do something. Have Manchin, your ex-boss, pass something. He, it, it was hilarious to me. He mentioned how, you know what, Manchin and Cinema they support voting rights. And Manchin, he's so serious about voting rights that he's drafting legislation and he's trying to find nine other Republicans. I mean, what do you even say to that? What do you even fucking say to that? These people are fucking so stupid. He supports voting rights and he's currently trying to find nine other Republicans. Okay, I'm trying to lose five pounds, which is why I'm currently securing five additional cakes so I can eat all of them. It just, it's counterintuitive. It's an oxymoron. It's its just, it's brain rot. So I don't know how um, this clip makes me feel in the end, because on one hand, seeing Nina Turner clap his cheeks is really entertaining. But on the other hand, what he said is so mind-numbingly stupid that I honestly feel just rage just <laughs> uncontrolled anger after watching that um and at some point you would think that these dipshits would wake up they would think okay we've gone a little bit too far even though i have everything i want even though i'm rich i have my mansion uh you know i at least want to live in a somewhat stable country where things are just functioning at least somewhat properly but they genuinely don't care it doesn't matter how bad the situation becomes there's nothing that will get them to change their minds and reassess their fucked worldview or fucked view about the way that the country should operate. It's just, it's infuriating, but here we are. This is America in 2022, just watching the clown show until it all just fucking comes crashing down. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Cause Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.